Welcome to the Digital Marketing Insights Podcast, brought to you by Brightside Digital. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm delighted to say we have Mariella this week, who's the Digital Account Manager. Mariella, how are you doing? Hi, Tom. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. Mariella, we always start off the same. Can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your career to date, please? Yeah, sure. So as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm not quite local. Um, this is not a local gal talking now. Um, I'm actually Croatian who fell in love with Ireland uh, two years ago. Um, I've spent the last six years in digital marketing. Um, I got my master's in business back in 2016 and i can honestly say i've been lucky enough to realize from the get-go that marketing was something i wanted to pursue in my career and something i was passionate about so it worked out pretty well for me all these years i guess um most of my digital marketing experience is deeply rooted in travel industry which might come as no surprise bearing in mind that croatia is quite a popular travel destination among fellow travelers so I got to work with um, various uh, vaca- uh, vacation rental companies, hotels, resorts, different travel agencies, uh, restaurants, um, and etc. And then uh, two years ago, I moved to Ireland and I started my journey at Hopkins Communications. Uh, for those of you listening and might not be familiar, so Hopkins Communications is integrated marketing agency based here in Cork, and now I have this wonderful opportunity to work with uh, various brands across different industries. So everything from car dealership companies, uh, pharma, health and beauty, retail, you name it really. So it's a kind of a mixed bag of both B2B and B2C. And uh, looking at your experience, I can see you've, you've pretty much done most areas of digital marketing. Is there any main strength in in one of those areas? Is there anything is your go-to skill? Yes, I suppose. So um, let's say that most of my day-to-day work is based around uh, paid media. So uh, Facebook and Instagram ads, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, uh, Google search and display, uh, YouTube ads, programmatic, digital audio, uh, you name it. And I suppose uh, Google Analytics is my very close friend. Um, I'm very passionate about uh, data analysis and I enjoy all this time spent in trying to connect the dots. And I guess I'm also good when it comes to uh, overall marketing strategy. So from strategy planning, implementation, and finally strategy execution. Brilliant. And I'll kind of focus in a little bit on the social paid areas because we always cover social from a kind of organic and a content point of view, but the paid, it doesn't get spoken about enough, especially the kind of coverage and reach you can get with accounts. Um, I suppose I'd be most interested in your TikTok work to date, just to, to hear a little bit about that. How are you finding TikTok paid services and how are you operating that platform? Yeah, so I think uh, the TikTok has been uh, quite a game changer to us, um, uh, and especially in terms of um, targeting uh, millennials, I I suppose. um, I think that every person that has a teenager back home or has been trying to, you know, target this audience um, in in their uh, their marketing uh, efforts, uh, I think they've been struggling enough. So it's kind of... um, uh, I guess um, it it became like a quiet discovery, especially if you're trying to uh, reach out to this, um, um, and this uh, to, to to millennials, I guess. And I think we didn't see uh, as a uh, uh, click through rate as high as with the TikTok, and in terms of um, overall uh, website traffic and so on. So I think especially. Um, for those kind of um, audiences, it, it became like a quite a, a good uh, platform to go to. In terms of targeting, how do you go about the targeting side of things, Maria? Yeah, uh, obviously it depends on, on the uh, campaign goal, I suppose. Uh, we did have uh, one of our recent uh, marketing campaigns was to um, to get that students to um, learn more about um, new courses. 
So obviously, uh, demographic would be one of the uh, key targeting um, key targeting uh, areas. And then obviously, the only problem with um, uh, location is is the whole uh, the country of Ireland. So um, at this point, uh, we couldn't be uh, we we're not uh, pos- it's not possible to go any granular than that. So you should be you're looking at the national targeting. So I guess that's at the moment that's the only downside I think uh, from from my uh, point of view when it comes to the TikTok. Um, and then obviously um, interests uh, would be also um, something we are also looking at. So. And, and when it comes to the TikTok, you can go very specific, very uh, detailed when it comes to um, the, the actual interests. Um, we didn't try to upload any customer list uh, or, or, or uh, any kind of uh, third party data. So um, uh, obviously, yeah, only demographics and age would be the, you know, the most uh, often used. Like, is there any tips that you've taken from maybe you're working Facebook and, and Instagram, Met, the Meta Studio, that you can apply to the other platforms? Do you have any go-to tips you want to share with our audience? So when it comes to different platforms, like even from the creative point of view, I would say that, say, like the content firm uh, for TikTok in particular is slightly different from what you could be um, using on Facebook and Instagram. So I would say it has to be more... Um, it has to be more real life, if I can even you know express myself uh, that way. It has to be more engaging. Um, has to be. Um, I mean, it, it shouldn't look polished like as opposed to the the content you would be um, posting on on Facebook and Instagram. So um, I guess TikTok has this um, their own suite that you can, you know, use uh, in terms of uh, creatives, upload your videos you want to use and, you know, make them more native, uh, platform native. Um, so, um, or you, you can play around uh, in Canva, I suppose. Um, you can repurpose those and maybe, you know, just make a couple of tweaks um, when you upload them to TikTok. So, um, yeah, and one of the uh, apps we've been using um, is uh, it's CapCut. It's it's very useful in terms of the video content. It's very easy to to use, and there's a plenty of tools uh, in the terms of the color transitions, uh, um, uh, text over, and uh, my 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 recommendation uh, for sure. Love it. And do you have any campaigns or work that? you're really proud of or made successful maybe using that as an example yeah so uh, speaking of success um i would like to take this opportunity to say that um hopkins communications is a finalist for cork digital marketing awards and not only one but for four uh, categories so the first one yeah, yeah. thank you uh, the first one is for the best digital marketing team so shout out to dean and grace my colleagues in digital we're doing an amazing job and we're also finalists for the best social media campaign for two different clients and finally for the best use of Facebook for one of our clients. And once again, I guess um, actions speak louder than the words. Um, so success to me would be uh, anything that a client has for their success and working in a digital marketing agency usually means that you're dealing with the different KPIs, different goals that range anything from lead generation, general brand awareness to website sales. And bearing in mind that I'm working closely with um, uh, various e-commerce brands, I'm happy to share my approach to successful e-commerce strategy and how I personally go about it rather than sharing exact metrics that might not be relevant to all listeners since they're quite industry specific. If that's okay uh, with you, Tom. Yeah, of course. Cool. So there are several key points I would like to emphasize here. So uh, first things first, I suppose um, I always begin with a website and and I work my way backwards. So what I mean by that is I first like to make sure that website is actually ready for advertising. In other words that the website is fast enough and then that, that we have all relevant and up-to-date information. 
Um, and then to check how this process is simple. It's in, it has to be intuitive. It has to be smooth. And once you made sure there aren't any bottlenecks on the website and ticked all these boxes, then you can start thinking, of, thinking about the e-commerce strategy. And in my experience, this is proven to be the best way to go about it because if there are any bottlenecks on the website, you might end up throwing your client's money out of window. And the thing is, it's usually the small things that can make huge difference. And I'm going to give you the most recent example. So um, we had this e-commerce client and they wanted to do the promo on, of their upcoming sale on paid social and Google. And the first thing I did, I went to their website to make sure everything was set up correctly. And I have noticed the prices after sale weren't featured. So um, they did have the banner on their, on their homepage referencing 20% off, but you couldn't really tell what the final price were. Um, until you were at the step three in the checkout. So the first thing that crossed my mind was you can't possibly expect people to do math on your website. So um, in fairness, we all want this complete and transparent information. So there shouldn't be any room for guessing. And I knew this is not an example of good customer experience. So I did a quick uh, Google search. And I found the plugin that should do the job. And finally, we did have the prices after sale sorted and featured. So I can't even imagine what the outcome might be if, the, if it wasn't for the plugin in the first place. So, yeah, you have to be very careful about those tiny details that can eventually have a huge impact on your overall marketing performance. And another thing that I believe that makes me successful in my role would be the support of different departments uh, at Hopkins. So say I don't have to worry about design work because I have a team of four creative souls um, that will do a design for me. And then if there are any requirements in the terms of uh, web updates, I can simply reach out to our a web development team. And in the terms of cross-department collaboration, this has been proven to be the best approach and the reason why there are so many uh, clients on retainer. And oftentimes, John, Tom, I mean, you probably, um, you know, from your own experience, um, you could be dealing with the small enterprises and emerging new brands that are trying to work their way in e-commerce world, and they're looking to drive sales on their website. And in fairness, that all makes sense. There's nothing wrong with this goal, but the problem with the emerging brands can be they lack brand awareness that should support online sales. And in this case in particular, you might be better off doing PR first or kicking off with a TV ad or digital audio or even traditional radio advertising to build that brand awareness before you even engage with the Google search or run a catalog sale on social media and actually asking people to shop from your website. And with that being said, we've noticed that this omnichannel approach delivers the best results for our clients. And introducing this diversity and interacting with potential customers across different channels and understanding the customer journey and adapting your digital strategy accordingly oftentimes delivers the best results. Yeah, I think you're spot on. <laughs> like, uh, like all... That was really well said, Mariella. Thank and, you. Uh, you've given it a perfect breakdown, and I can see why you guys are, um, I'm sure, soon to be award winning. <laughs> Thank um, you. Fingers crossed. Is, <laughs> yeah. Is is there any particular area yourself you're looking and upskilling into, and why? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so uh, it's a funny one, actually, because sometimes I feel I'm all over the place uh, since I'm quite a curious person. However, I try my best to narrow down the list of my interests. So um, recently I have enrolled with uh, two different courses on Udemy. So the first one is um, a web development course for beginners. And the second one is the implementation of e-commerce data layer in GA4. So the new version of analytics with the Google Tag Manager. And the reason being is that these two help me to feel like a developer without necessarily having to be one. Uh, jokes aside, um, as I mentioned, um, 
I spend quite a lot of time with the e-commerce clients and having an accurate e-commerce information reported back in GA4 is of huge importance and in order to do my job right. And I'm saying this because I've seen a lot of broken e-commerce data layers that are, that end up with the inaccurate data and reports in Google Analytics. And obviously, all this has a huge impact on all of our paid advertising. So uh, let's take, for example, product names, e-commerce quantity, purchases, total e-commerce revenue. This is all relevant and imp important information in the first place. So you need to make sure that everything is set up correctly before you even start with paid advertising. And then again, this can all be sorted with the Google Tag Manager. Um, and if you're using uh, the Google Tag Manager to its full potential, you don't necessarily need a developer, even though the, the actual setup does require some uh, basic, basic coding skills. So yeah. And I probably haven't mentioned this before, um, I, I I actually wanted to study psychology initially. So whenever I have a chance, um, I, 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 I'm always happy to read a new research, um, new finding uh, in, the, in the fields of um, uh, human psychology and behavioral science. And I honestly believe there's no greater example of um, psychology application in real life rather than marketing so yeah um, i guess i I'm, I'm lucky to have the best of both worlds yeah they're they're hugely linked yeah yeah um especially when you come to website ux and things like yeah, that as well more certainly um, yeah. lastly we always ask the same question on the show which is if you could bottle up one personality trait you have yourself mariella mm -hmm. what would it be Oh, that's a tough one, Tom. Um, I guess if you ask the same question, people that are, um, that are close to me, I, I guess they would go with either curiosity or being persistent. And I think it's the emotional intelligence, really. So this willingness to try to walk in someone else's shoes or observe the world through someone else's lenses is, is definitely something that... that uh, that I have uh, benefit from in, in more in both my personal and the business life. And this ability to demonstrate empathy, to nurture meaningful relationships, to gain trust from my colleagues, from my clients, employers, or whomever I might be dealing with, and to understand their, their expectations, their needs, is definitely something uh, that helped me to become the person that's easy to work with. And honestly, Tom, I feel that being that being the person that's easy to work with it's probably one of the grossly underestimated traits in today's business because let's face it, it it's not a one man show it's it's about collaboration it's about the teamwork and I, I honestly believe this is exactly where the magic happens yeah really well said oh, thank you mariella that's it that's the end of the show thank you so much for being on the show if people want to get in contact with you, yourself or your company how can they get in touch uh, feel free to um to tag me in the post and uh, or they can uh, go directly to hopkins communications website um and there's a contact form so feel free to get in touch or if you're attending court for digital marketing awards don't be a stranger say hello love it thank you thank you tom thank you for having me